Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online character build video with me, Sherman. Today guys, I'm bringing you the Stormbuckler Rogue. Now, before I get started, disclaimer, this is a role play, casual play build. This is not meant for meta play. Now, going into the, the concept behind these characters was they are basically sailors of the high seas. They're pirates, they're swashbucklers, they're, they're rogues, okay? That that travel along the coasts and oceans of the world of Tamriel and by doing so they've tapped into the ability to call upon the storms when necessary to aid them so that's where they come into being called storm bucklers now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the character so we are a storm buckler rogue this is a red guard sorcerer any race can play this I chose the red guard because it just felt very Arabian Nights kind of theme and it really fits that idea of like the Sailor type format um, if you guys didn't know Red Guards were actually some of the most uh, renowned sailors of the world before they made their way to the uh, Alakir Desert in the Daggerfall area and uh, Because of that they have really unique just a really neat, unique feel to playing this. So, um, but going on, this is primarily a damage dealer role. As you can see, we have 64 points into stamina, so it is a stamina damage dealer, and it works out really well with the way it works. So, and again, just like with all my my builds, they can be tanks and healers as well as damage dealers. So, the primary role will be damage dealer. They can play tank, and to play a tank with this. You will take enough points out of stamina, you'll put enough points into health, along with the food and everything to get to 30k. They play off tanks, they do not play main tanks, except for in dungeons. And then on top of that, <coughs> to play this as a healer, um, you will take the 64 out of stamina and you'll put it all into magicka. Now, the 64 points doesn't have to all go into health to play a tank. You, there's other tools you can use to help maximize your health pool and give you more health depending on the role you play and how you play. So you can actually get more out of them if you put into um, health and you use some food and skills to adjust it to 30k and then you can take the rest and put it back into stamina. The healer side's really easy. You just dump everything into stamina, make sure you're using Tristat food and you are using the Atronach Stone. So... <clears throat> Now, going over the stats, as you can see, our max magicka is 12,980. Now, it is kind of low, but don't stress that too much. We don't use a lot of magicka-based damage abilities when we're playing a stamina damage dealer. So, it's okay to have that lower max stamp. We do have an 18,000, almost 19,000 max health. We have a 33k max stamina. And then over here on our recovery sign, we have a 637 mag recovery with a 383 health recovery and then a 1735 stam recovery. And we will always have a high stam recovery with this build, and you guys will see why. Moving on to weapon damage, we have a 2881 weapon damage with 42% weapon crit. We do have a 1639 spell damage, 19% spell crit, 14k spell resistance. 13k physical resistance. This is a heavy armor or a medium armor build, by the way. So going over the enchants or the traits, sorry, blah, the Mundestone. <laughs> we are using the Lover Mundestone primarily for that higher spell and physical penetration to give us that higher damage output for both spell and physical damage. Now, the reason why for the spell, you guys will see in a minute when we get to the monster set and the, another gear set. <clears throat> and then we are using Dubious Cameron Throne. This gives us max health, stamina, and, ma and stam recovery. Now, there's a reason for this food, and that's to keep our, our stam recovery coming in so we can effectively do a rotation without running out of resources really fast. All right, now jumping over to sets. Starting with our equipment and inventory stuff in our sets. Starting with our potions, tripods for when we're tanking. When we're, when we're playing healer, we're going to use spell power pots, and we will use 
stamina power pots for when we're we're playing weapon or stamina damage primarily. Now the reason for the dubious Cameron Throne is it does give you higher stamina recovery. It does give you a little bit less health and stamina than say your tri-stat food that you will use primarily when you're playing tank or healer. Now the reason why you use this when you're playing a healer is it gives you a higher max magicka pool. It also gives you a higher health pool and it gives you a better stamina pool because you will be using vigor along with other heals to help keep your group alive. <coughs> All right. And that is pretty much it for that stuff. Now we're going to go on to the sets. Starting with our monster set, we are using Storm Fists. Anytime I make something with Storm related, it's going to have Storm Fist in it. You guys should guess that. Or, or Lombrus. So this, on the one piece, and Stam Recovery, the two piece, when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to create a Storm Fist to crush the enemy, dealing X amount of shock damage every second for three seconds to all enemies within four meters. Now shock damage is considered spell damage, so you wanna get the higher spell pin, so this thing will do a more effective damage. That's why we use the Lover Mundus Stone. Now everything will take damage for in, within four meters over the three seconds. And then in the final second, the fist will close, crushing the enemies, dealing 10 X amount of physical damage. Um, now, just to let you guys know again, the spell damage or the shock damage and the physical damage here it can be adjusted through your 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 champion level so you can get more shock damage if you want or more physical damage if you want depending on how you have your cp set up <clears throat> all right moving on to the next set and the next set's pretty obvious too a lot of people probably recognize this from the tempest barbarian but it is called the storm master the storm master set is a really good set. It drops in Tempest Island along with the monster set. And this one, when uh, on the two piece ends, weapon critical, three piece weapon critical, four piece weapon damage, and then the five piece. When you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your light attacks deal an additional X amount of shock damage every 20 seconds. So this is really nice because you get this right off the get go. The way you start your rotation is you drink your potion, you buff yourself with your resistance buff, which is called a hurricane, then you heavy attack, and then you go into your rotation. The reason for that is so you can get this to proc, so you can have this applied every 20 seconds. I, I usually do it every 18, I'll throw a heavy attack, so I can get this, keep this going continuously. That extra damage adds up really fast. Moving on to the next set we are using, and this is where people are going to probably question again a lot of things, and that is Sword Dancers. A lot of people say, why aren't you using Automaton? It would be better. It gives you X amount towards your physical damage. This gives me X amount of damage to all my dual wield abilities. So all my dual wield abilities, doesn't matter what it is, will do extra damage. And you'll see why it works so well with the Sorcerer. So the two-piece adds weapon crit. Three piece max stamina, four piece weapon damage, and then the five piece adds 450 weapon damage to your dual wield abilities. So it's really nice for that. And as you guys can see, we are using dual wield on both bars for that purpose. Now, going over the traits and enchants, starting with the monster set, we are using a reinforced monster set on the helm. And the reason why is because it's heavy armor. We want that helm to be heavy so we can maximize our resistances with it. Now, this is going to give us the highest amount of resistance we can get with this setup. Now, another combination you can use is Hunting's Raid or uh, Night Mother's Embrace on the body and Storm Masters down here, but your, your max stam will be lower. That is a combination I have tested. But with this, though, we're going with the um, Reinforced on the Heavy Helm. Uh, so you can get that higher resistance value tri stats so we can hybridize and all three rolls more effectively And then on the, the shoulders we are using a light shoulders with a max stamina and divines Remember when I told you guys that you can get more resistance or more resistances and stuff If you have the belt light and the helm medium or if you have the chest heavy and the, the belt light it, You guys can see here that I, I'm not lying. This is how the resistances end up. And that's why our resistances are a lot lower than some of the other builds I've shown, is because we don't have as much into our physical and spell resistance this way. 
but we do use the light shoulders so we can have that one piece of light armor and the one piece of heavy armor and we do use max stamina enchant with divine's trait the divine's trait is going to maximize our mundus stone use so that's really good and then on the body the chest we are using infused with a tristat enchant now the reason for the infused is to give us higher stat values the more, the more stat value we have out of our character the more effective they can be in all three roll types but we also get a really high stam recovery because of the way our sets are set up see we're using this monster set that gives us stam recovery and we also have another stam recovery on our character so we get a really high stam recovery with this character because we're using infused and we can get away with using that this way moving on to the gloves we are using oh and these are trying stat here as you can see they give us 520 on the magic and stamina and 572 health this is more than a hundred and almost a hundred more than what we get here so we do get quite a bit more stats with this infused now on our legs we are also using infused with the tri stat enchant now the reason i went on head on to the legs so you guys can see the three big pieces we are using tri stats and the the legs and the chest are infused with the helm being reinforced heavy onto the smaller pieces here the boots the belts and the gloves they are all max stamina enchants divines maximizing our stamina pool and our our um Mundus stone use the higher we have the more divine pieces we have the better Mundus stones we have but we don't want everything divines and here's why you lose too much in resources and you lose too much in resistances so you lose survivability a lot so using this setup with the four small pieces the shoulders the belt the gloves the boots all divines you can actually take advantage of the bigger pieces for other things And then moving on to the jewelry, we are using two Trirune Rings of the Sword Dancer, both weapon damage, and the Trirunes is to allow us to hybridize better. So like when we are using Tristat food, we do get a higher Magicka pool, as you can see, a higher health pool and a higher stamina pool. Now depending on what role we're playing, whether we're playing tank, healer, or damage dealer, um, Dubious Cameron Throne is going to make us more effective at damage dealer because it's going to give us a higher recovery rate and everything. Witch Mother's Potent Brew doesn't work too well with a Red Guard, so unfortunately you can use it, but you're going to have a really low magic pool um, because of it. And that's if you're playing a healer. So, All right, so the reason for the two Trirune, though, is so we can hybridize better. And then the two rings both have weapon damage in here to boost our weapon damage output. Our primary damage type is going to be with melee, dual wield, so we want to boost that weapon damage. Moving on to the necklace, we are using a bloodthirsty necklace with a stam recovery. And I've been questioned on this a lot, why I've been using a stam recovery or a mag recovery in my jewelry. And the reason why, guys, is so you can maximize your recovery rate with your character. This game isn't just about dealing damage. It's about resource management, um, survivability and damage. Your character is built up of those three three things. With Magicka and Stamina, these can apply to both your damage or your survivability because of your buffs for yourself to boost your resistances, give you shields, that kind of stuff. Your Max Stamina, your survivability. And then even down here, this represents your damage output, this represents your survivability. Everything you do. And then on top of that, you have to manage your resources as well to keep your recovery rate good. Because if you have a bad recovery rate, that means your resources are going to be going out faster than you're going to be getting resources back, so you can do a steady rotation. All right, going to go back and turn my food on. All right, so moving on to the weapons now, we are using dual wield both bars. So with the front bar, we have a sharpened uh, sword dancer sword and it is a sword um, and this will give you that higher physical and spell pin but the shock enchant on it will give you a greater chance of applying concuss to your enemies which means you can set them off balance um, and that's if they're standing in a wall of elements so this helps with your groups off balance application which is good <clears throat> 
Moving on to the other next uh, weapon, we are using a dagger with a physical damage enchant and a or absorb stamina dam damage enchant. This deals physical damage and restores 177 stamina. We are using it on a Nernhund weapon. The Nernhund weapon in the offhand is going to boost our weapon damage with that offhand weapon. And then on top of that, we're also going to get 6% of our offhand weapon applied to our damage as well. So no matter what, we're getting greater damage potential because it's 6% of 1500 and not 1300. Okay, now moving on to the back bar. The first weapon we have is an infused sword with a weapon damage enchant. Now as you can see this is infused on a one-handed so it gives us 226 weapon damage and spell damage added to our character. Now that weapon and spell damage is boosted by 30% because when you're using one-handed weapons you get lower enchant values but since we're using dual wield we actually get better damage output on the back bar because of this because we're using a Nernhound as well here. Now the, the reason for the infused is to keep this proct more effectively and then on top of that to boost that weapon and spell damage. Over here we are using another absorb stamina Nernhound weapon and the reason for the dual Nernhound is this way you maximize your weapon damage no matter what bar you're on. So this way when we swap bars we don't lose that much in weapon damage. We want to keep that higher weapon damage all the time. <laughs> All right, now, <clears throat> moving on to skills. And before I do that, people have, are gonna question this. Why a sword and dagger combo? The reason for the dagger is that increases our crit chance by 3%. So we want that higher crit chance in the offhand. And in the main hand, the sword increases your, your physical damage or all damage types by 3%. So this is spell, physical, all that. And so that's the reason why I like the sword dagger combo especially with this build. Alright, moving on to skills. Now we are a sorcerer with this <clears throat> and depending on what role we play, whether we're playing a tank, a healer, or damage dealer, I do unlock the ultimate active abilities and passes for every skill line in the class. This way I can take advantage of all the different skills and their passes for different play styles. Now moving on to weapons, we primarily and only use dual wield here, so we do take the ultimate active abilities and passives. Now, <clears throat> if you want to play a more effective healer, you can learn the resto staff. And if you want a little bit of range, you can learn the bow. But remember this, Sword Dancers has no bow for it. It only has dual wield weapons. So you, could, you would have to use a bow from like Agility Bow, Maelstrom Bow, Master Bow on the back bar. And that means you're going to lose extra weapon damage when you're on the back bar because your dual wield abilities that you use on the front bar will lose that 450 weapon damage when you swap bars. So that's the other reason why we stick with dual wield with this on both bars. Now, moving on to armor, light armor. I do take the top three of these. I've already covered this in several videos, but there is a reason why I take the top three because the bottom two require you to wear five or more pieces of light armor and we are a five medium setup. So we take advantage of the grace, the evocation, and the spell wording. Medium armor, we take all of them because we want to get that greater advantage of the medium armor passes because we are wearing five pieces of medium armor. And it's mainly for agility because this is the only one that requires us to wear five or more pieces of medium armor and it gives us a higher weapon damage by 15%, but for wearing five pieces of medium armor, we also get a higher weapon crit. Heavy armor, we take the top three. This is so we can take advantage of that those benefits there for wearing the one piece of heavy armor. World skills, <coughs> we are a going... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, allergies, I can't stop it. We are using soul magic here from the world skill lines. Um, you can be a vampire and a werewolf with this. Either one works. If you're going to be a vampire, I, I would say go with dark elf. If you're going to be a werewolf... Red Guard is fine, but it works better the way it is. <laughs> so, with the Soul Magic, the ultimate active ability and the first passive are optional, but the next two I would say get, because Soul Summons allows you to revive every hour without using a Soul Gem, and Soul Lock allows you to re fill a Soul Gem when you kill an enemy with a weapon damage ability at a 10% chance. 
guild skills. Now, I'm going to point this out. With these, you can learn the Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild and the Ledgerman with this um, setup, and it works out really well. Because your character is being a sailor and a pirate and all that kind of stuff, treasure hunter, that kind of thing, you are going to want to have access to these skill lines so you have that better ability of lock picking. You're going to have that better ability of sneaking up and stealing things from people through the Thieves Guild. You're going to have a better chance of assassinating people with the Dark Brotherhood. So getting these skill lines really plays well into this character type. Now when it comes to the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, Sigic Order, and Undaunted, I am going to tell you I do take all the ultimates, active abilities, and passives for each one. This way I have more access to skills that I can use in different situations with different roles or different thing, different factors of the game. So it just depends really on the situation of what game mode I'm playing, whether I'm playing PvP, PvE Overland, and delves in public dungeons and world bosses, to playing dungeons and playing trials. Because in Overland, you're solo playing most of the time. So it's good to have a good amount of skills and abilities that you can use in different situations. So having access to every ability you can get a hold of is going to make it better for you. So we do unlock all the Fighters Guild active abilities, ultimate and passives, Mages Guild all the way down through the Sigic Order, and on to Undaunted. Now the reason for the Undaunted ones is every single one of these is a synergy. Doesn't matter what you're playing, whether you're playing a tank and you're using Inner Rage to taunt, to using Energy Orb to give resources to your allies, all of them are synergies. So having synergies is good. Moving on to Alliance War. Assault skills. Now, Alliance War skills you get from doing PvP. Just like with Undaunted, you have to play dungeons to get the Undaunted skill line filled. And that means you have to play through the story part of the dungeons, the Undaunted dailies, the Undaunted random daily uh, dungeon, or doing the random daily dungeons, or playing through, <coughs> again, the Undaunted quests and their dailies and doing the del the daily delve or the daily dungeon runs those will give you experience towards us now they give you different experience based on the different difficulties so in normal difficulty you get 10 points and veteran difficulty you get 20 points added to your experience pool when you complete a story for a dungeon i believe it's 35 points towards your experience pool so this way if you wanted to unlock the skill line really effectively you play the dungeon finder thing you do specific dungeons, start with Fungal Grotto, work your way all the way up to Vaults of Madness on normal. If you do all these dungeons with doing their, without doing their dailies, just the stories, this will get you enough experience to unlock your Undaunted skill line to rank 9. So this will allow you to unlock every class of, uh, every of the active abilities and passives. The passives are really good though. This one, anytime you activate a synergy, you get 4% of your resources back. And this one allows you to increase your resource pools by 2% for each type of armor type you're wearing, whether that's heavy, light, or medium. So since we're wearing 5 medium, 1 light, 1 heavy, we get 6% back. <coughs> and then, again, the Alliance War is you have to play PvP, Battlegrounds, or Cyrodiil. And you only get AP, or a bit, uh, Alliance points from that, and that's how you level your Assault line and your Support line. And you can unlock the ultimate and two active abilities I have because these work really good in PvE. These other ones do as well, but not as effectively. Same thing with the support line. As you can see, I have the ultimate two active abilities and the one passive. This passive can be used in PvE. So We are a red guard, and I'm going to go over the red guard traits real quick. So Wayfair gives you increased experience gained with sword and, sword and shield. And this one also increases the duration of your food by 15 minutes. This is one of the races I was talking about in another video. Uh, this is really good because it makes your food even longer lasting. Martial training reduces the cost of your weapon abilities by 8%. This plays really well into this build. Uh, conditioning increases your max stamina by 2,000. And then adrenaline rush, when you deal direct damage, you restore 950 stamina. This effect can occur once every five seconds. So pretty much every five seconds, you're almost getting 1,000 stamina back <clears throat> on top of your recovery rate, on top of everything else. All right, moving on to crafting. Now, medicinal use and alchemy and the provisioning gourmand and connoisseur, these are two things that I would suggest for long-term play. Go, don't try to unlock them really fast. Take your time in unlocking these. 
Because if you rush getting your passives unlocked here, <clears throat> what will happen a lot of times is you'll burn through a lot of resources that you could use for actually making good um, potions and stuff for yourself later on. And provisioning the same thing. So take your time learning these skills, these passives. And it, you don't have to do 50, uh, to I don't think, to unlock everything. You might have to do it to get con Connoisseur at 50, but or the final rank of Connoisseur, but it's not bad. And then Alchemy, of course, really good because of the medicinal use. This, when when using potions, the effects resulting effects last 30% longer. All right, now we're gonna go over the skills we have on our front bar and our back bar. Starting with the front bar, we have Blood Craze. Now this deals X amount of damage up front, X amount of damage over 10 seconds, and it'll heal you every two seconds for the duration. So for the 10 seconds, you will heal five times, giving you X amount of health every two seconds. Next ability we have, and you can use either more from this, but I find this one works out really well, is Whirling Blades. Now this will deal X amount of damage to all enemies within a six meter radius around you. So 360 degrees around you. It'll deal X amount of damage and deals up to 100% more damage if the enemies are less than 50% health. So this actually deals more damage when the enemy is below 50% health. The next ability we have is called Rapid Strikes. Now this is a single target ability. This hits a target five consecutive times, each time doing the same amount of damage, or so you think, but in fact it goes up by 3% each time. So you do X amount of damage on the first hit, 3% more on the next hit, 6% more on the next hit, 9% more on the next hit. You guys get the point, all the way up to 15%. And then the final hit will deal 300% more damage. So that final one doesn't do get that subsequent extra, it just gets 300% more damage. Moving on to the next ability, we use Flying Blade here. Now this, you throw, basically you're throwing a dagger at an enemy, and it does X amount of damage. Um, it also grants Major Brutality for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 20%. Next ability we have is a slot for the slotted purposes. While slotted, your max stamina is increased by 8%, and your light attacks deal 11% more damage. And then the next ability we have is our ultimate, and this is called Flawless Dawnbreaker. Now this does X amount of damage up front, X amount of damage over 6 seconds, and then while slotted, your weapon damage is increased by 5%. This allows you for that greater weapon damage and just damage output all together because 5%, even this 5% doesn't apply to the extra 450 you get, you get 450 on top of the 5%, so it's, it's really nice. Moving on to the back bar. <clears throat> on the back bar, we have our first ability, which is called Rearming Trap. Now this will set a trap after 1.5 seconds, it will activate or it can be triggered and then it will deal X amount of damage and then X amount of damage over six seconds. And then on top of that, it can also immobilize those enemies if they could be immobilized for six seconds. And it grants you minor force, increasing your critical damage by 10%. After being triggered, the trap resets itself and can be triggered one more time. Moving on to the next ability we have, it is called Razor Caltrops. Now this deals physical damage <coughs> on the initial hit. So when you throw this out, it will explode dealing physical damage. Then it lands and it deals damage every second for 12 seconds. Any enemy who goes in the circle where these caltrops are, their movement speed is reduced by 30%. Next ability we have is called Deadly Cloak. Now this one's really nice. What you do is you envelop yourself in protective cloud of razors, gaining major evasion for 15 seconds, reducing your damage from area attacks by 25%. And then every three seconds, the shrapnel will pulse, dealing X amount of damage to all enemies within five meters. Our next ability is called Hurricane. Now this is a really cool ability. It deals physical damage every second for 15 seconds. Now what it does is it creates a maelstrom around you, a circling, swirling thing of air, and this will deal damage every second. Now, any enemy standing within that five meter radius in the beginning starts taking this damage. Then, after so many seconds, it will expand in size, and it'll also start dealing up to 150% more damage. So it keeps growing in size and damage all the way to a maximum of 150% and nine meters. <clears throat> 
While this is active, you gain major resolve and major reward, increasing physical and spell resistance by 5,280, and you gain minor expedition, increasing movement speed by 10%. We have to have bound armaments on both bars because it's a while slotted effect. So while slotted, you gain the 8% stamina and the 11% damage to light attacks. Our final ability is our ultimate for dual wield, and this is called Rend. In this one, you will slash enemies in front of you, dealing X amount of physical damage over 16 seconds and healing for 55% of the damage done. It's really nice. Now that I've shown you guys that, we are going to go on to our champion points, starting with the Red Tree and the Steed. We have 56 in the Ironclad. This reduces damage taken from damage over time, or sorry, this reduces damage from direct damage attacks by 20%. My gosh. We have 20 in a medium armor focus. This increases physical resistance by 1900. And then we have for wearing five or more pieces of medium armor. And then we have 18 in the spell shield, increasing your spell resistance by 1729. Moving on over here, we have 31 in the thick skin, reducing your damage taken from damage over time effects by 13%. We have 43 in the hardy, reducing your damage taken from physical poison disease damage by 10%. And 43 in the elemental defender. Reducing your damage taken from Flame Frost, Shock, and Magic damage by 10%. Moving on, we have 40 in the Bastion. This increases the effectiveness of your damage shields by 16%. And then 19 in a Quick Recovery. This increases your healing received by 5%. Moving on to the Green Tree, we have 40 in the Warlord. This reduces your uh, Break Free cost by 16%. 16 in the Sprinter, reducing your Sprint cost by 10%. And 16 in the Bashing Focus, reducing your Bash cost by 10%. Moving on to the middle tree here, we have 75 in a Moon Calf, increasing stamina recovery by 14%, 43 in Arcanus, increasing Mag recovery by 10%, and then moving on over here, we have 40 in the Tumbling, reducing Dodge Roll cost by 16%, 40 in the Shadow Ward, reducing Block cost by 16%. Moving on to the blue tree, we do not hybridize this build because we want to focus primarily on the stamina damage. So with this, we do put 43 in the Bless. This increases our healing done by 10%, so we can focus on being more of an effective healer when we need to be. Now, if you want to hybridize, you can do that. Moving on to the middle tree, we have 35 in the Physical Weapon Expert. This increases your light and heavy attacks with dual wield, one-handed um, sword and shield, the bow weapon, and werewolf form by 20%. And then we have 40 in the Master at Arms. This increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by 16%. And then moving on over here, we have 56 in the Mighty. This increases physical poison disease damage by 12%. 56 in the First Size Strikes, increasing your critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 20%. And 40 in the Thaumaturge. This increases your damage done with damage over time effects by 16%. Whew. All right. Now that I've shown you guys that stuff, I'm going to do two quick parses. One on this little guy, this represents more of your damage done in a dungeon environment. And then one on the big guy over there that's flaming and on fire and everything. And that'll represent what your damage would look like in an organized group dynamic. So, first things first, we're going to drink our potion. We're going to pop our hurricane and heavy attack this guy. <coughs> Oops, I did that wrong. And as you can see, we did roughly about 23k DPS. This thing I can normally get up to about 28 if I can pull up a very good rotation. Now our max weapon damage was coming in at 3669, but remember our light attacks, <coughs> rapid strikes, um, whirlwind, whirling blade, deadly cloak, uh, blood craze all those are affected by the uh, extra 450 weapon damage from the monster set we have or not our monster set but our other set our sword dancer set and as you can see our storm master was up a hundred percent of the time dealing that extra shock damage so and this is what our, ma our spell damage looks like when we're playing with magic on so now we're gonna go on over here we're gonna fight this big guy and this will definitely, you guys will see a difference in our damage output with this as well. So potion, again, hurricane, heavy attack right off the bat. And then we're going to do our trap beast. And this one I will use some ultimate abilities. I 
don't think I got my, uh, yeah, I didn't get my, my, my thing there. If I can keep Stormmaster up, I can usually keep this about 35k consistently, and sometimes even get as high as 40k DPS with it, and it's really nice. It does a lot of really good damage. Now, I'm going to do some alterations to the build so we can take it into a dungeon environment and play it more effectively. So that does require me to get rid of bound armaments, um, unfortunately, because I need some stuff that's going to help me be more effective with dealing damage and staying alive. So we're going to go over here and grab our Storm Calling ability, Power Surge. This will also boost our weapon and spell damage by uh, 20%, but it also heals us whenever we deal critical damage. <clears throat> and then on the front bar here, we are going to go ahead and grab our Daedric Summoning Empowered Ward. This is going to give us a small damage shield, as you can see, for 6k, but it's also going to give us increased mag recovery by 10%. So what I'm also going to do is switch to Tristat Food, so I can get that higher max health and max magicka. And then we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the Depths of Malatar dungeon. This dungeon was added with the Wrathstone DLC. And this is one of the newer DLC dungeons. Because it came out for the beginning of the Season of the Dragons as the first release before Elsewhere. And so this is one of the newer dungeons. Considered one of the more difficult dungeons that is added with the DLC. So it's, it's really good. And then Frostbolt's actually a little harder. Because you have more one-shot mechanics in that dungeon. <coughs> And yes, I have soloed this dungeon with this character, so I'm just going to let you guys know. A lot of these uh, characters, I do see how far I can make it, and this one has made it all the way to the end. Go ahead and pop my potion, get my stuff going. And since we have more enemies, I'm just going to hurricane them all. Or run that tall of them to get rid of them. And as you can see, I can keep my, my resistances and all my buffs up pretty good. Um, find big ugly where is he hiding he's not over there he's not over there that means he is somewhere there he is Okay, I gotta stop, otherwise I will have him dead in a second, and then he'll disappear, and that'll be really, really horrible. So no matter what, this guy uh, will heal. Like, your character just heals so much from the power surge, it's ridiculous. So. Alright, so we're gonna go back to the Way Shrine, and that is pretty much it for the Storm Buckler Rogue, guys. I hope you guys like it. It is one of the builds that I haven't found to be m one of the more fun builds that I've made, and just more interesting because it really fits that... Kind of anyone who's really big fan of Sinbad or you know Aladdin or the the, the Forty Thieves, the whole um, Arabian Nights kind of of theme. That's where this fits in really well, and I really do enjoy that kind of uh, of idea or using my imagination in that sense, if you will, to play that kind of content. I really think it fits well into the game, especially in the Alakir area. And hopefully soon, when we if we get it sometime, high pass would be really cool because I think it'd fit really well in there. It also fits really well in the Hughes Bane area and the Dark Brotherhood, which by the way is going on right now. The Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild events. So this would be really good for that. This would be really fun for that. <laughs> And that is pretty much it for the video. So that means you guys know what's coming next. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.